Welcome back to another episode of Coffee with April. I'm back with the board. Um, not sure if that was a good thing last time, but at least good enough to try again, right? So what we're gonna try to do is I'm just gonna walk you through our roasting approach um, with one of our coffees because it's a very interesting time of year now where we see most of the coffees coming out of harvest from the first quarter of 2018 and that are still in roast trees are getting older. And most of them, not all, but most of them are starting to display flavor notes and taste notes that are vastly different from what you tried, for example, from a pre-sample, pre-shipment sample, or what you tried uh, basically when you started to roast it, right? So if you have a coffee for a longer time, what you wanna do is you wanna try to look into how can you alter, change, update, your roasting to make sure that the taste stays positive. I say positive because it's not necessarily that, that I believe that you should look for the same taste in the coffee throughout for, for let's say six, eight months because that's not necessarily realistic. Most coffees are actually gonna change and to some extent, my goal is to showcase the coffee from where that coffee is today um, more so than, okay, originally this coffee has these flavor notes and I want those flavor notes to stay in the coffee throughout the whole cycle because that's most likely not gonna happen. Now, there's a lot of things that can change the taste quality of the green coffee, whether it's how are you storing this coffee, uh, but perhaps most importantly, um, how is this coffee processed? We know that coffee processing is one of the most important factors when it comes to the shelf life of a coffee. Then you have simple stuff like, for example, is the coffee backpacked? We see a lot of Kenyan coffees coming out being vacuum packed and the quality, you know, definitely holds up a lot longer than most other origins, even though that's often very much linked to the high quality of wash processing that they're working with as well. But I just wanted to show you from a roasting perspective, again, we're keeping it simple. From a roasting perspective, what have we done with the Kenyan coffee that we have worked with, right? In terms of progression of roasting, it gets a bit more complicated than this, but it's basically showing this is how we roasted the coffee when it first came in which would be August of 2018, versus this is how we're roasting the coffee today, being uh, the beginning of 2019, but the same green coffee and the same lot of green coffee as well. So the coffee that we're looking at is a Kenyan coffee that comes from the Nyeri uh, region that is basically a process station called Gatamboya. And uh, the name just comes from the Gatamboya River that actually is, is fairly close to the process station. And, it's an amazing coffee. Um, it's one of those Kenyan coffees, classic for, for the location in Kenya being very citric, uh, but it also has this beautiful, bold kind of red wine, uh, berry-like character to the coffees, which is really amazing to have as well. Now, what we've done, what we've seen with this coffee is so the taste quality has changed quite a lot. And quite often when it comes to Kenyan coffee, I tend to almost always prefer them in the later part of the cycle being now, meaning that Kenyan coffee often is actually peaking around December and January, which is relatively different from most other origins. But we're, we're lucky with this coffee in the sense that it hasn't started displaying any kind of age notes whatsoever, which is really interesting. But to be able to enhance the taste experience of the coffee and to be able to actually work with the fact that this coffee is changing. When it started to come in, uh, we had a much more lighter taste profile than we have now, and I'm not referring to lightness in terms of roast. I'm referring to lightness in terms of, of the qualities of the taste that we had, uh, being that we had a very citric coffee that was very focusing on light, kind of gooseberry notes with a bit of blackberry as well, but we didn't really have the complexity or the layers of them. Today we're at a much, much, much better place. And we've done a few changes that I think is really interesting and 
I am going to generalize a tiny bit. We are, to be fair, very specific with each coffee, but I'm still writing down some kind of rule, not rules, but tips. Keep in mind that what we're doing in these videos is not about telling anyone how they're supposed to, uh, to roast. We're just telling people how we are roasting. Then what do you guys do with that information? That's, that's up to whoever is looking, right? So the key thing here that we've done with this coffee, uh, or we've done several things. First of all, we changed the batch size, which is pretty interesting. Um, basically, the, um, the, bigger the, the bigger the batch size, the more consistent your roasting is very often. Also, uh, the more you're actually roasting the coffee because you're increasing uh, the energy transfer, uh, especially working on a convection roaster because you actually increase the amount of connectivity and the amount of radiant energy within the batch because it's a bigger mass and a bigger mass tends to actually roast itself, right? So we increased the batch size uh, with about 10%, which is really interesting. On top of that, we're changing our burner structure, which is also is, is based on two things. One, we have green coffee that is changing. Uh, two, we have a batch size that is changing, right? So with a different batch size comes um, a different way of applying energy when we're roasting. Uh, on top of that, we have increased our end temperature with 0 0.5 to, to 1 degree Celsius on this coffee, which on a lowering is actually relatively small because the probe is very sensitive. Then we also increase the, the time after crack um, from five to eight seconds from a previous roast that we've done here, right? Um, which, is, which is a really interesting thing because that's changing the taste perception of this coffee quite a lot. And what we're tasting today, which is, again, that's is closer to where we actually want it to be, is that we have deeper flavor notes, right? So it's not heavy, uh, but we have, today we have a lot of blackberry. Uh, we have less citrus, uh, we have more red wine in the character, and we have a lot more apples as well. So it's still an acidic, very vibrant kidney and coffee, but it has higher complexity, a higher amount of sweetness, and, and a better depth, right? And it's based on the green coffee that's changing, and it's also based on, on progression and updating in roast. But what we see more and more now is that we have basically different roast approaches for um, every three months where we have the coffee in that we're trying to apply, arguing that as the green coffee is changing, our roasting should be changing as well. Um, and I think this kind of coffee, for example, is a great um, way for us to showcase that because we feel that the coffee went from, from being very good to be uh, very good in a different way here as well, right? And we really want to take that coffee on that kind of journey. So. Interestingly enough, and, and on the subject as well of the aging coffee, is that if you have a coffee uh, that is displaying, for example, more age than what this does, because again, this is actually holding up really well, then there's some other stuff to think about as well. And I think looking into what we've been writing down here, increasing a tiny bit on the end temperature, um, changing a tiny bit on the time after crack, plus increasing the batch size as well, is gonna make for a coffee that actually showcases less of these flavor notes if you're already roasting very light. So, for example, if your standard roast is a medium or dark roast, this is not necessarily gonna change anything. Um, but what we're focusing on here is that we're not necessarily looking for, in terms of color, a much darker coffee or even darker at all. Uh, we're just really looking at keeping a similar color, uh, but changing the attribution of energy, which is highlighting different aspects um, of the coffee. So we think that's a very important thing. So uh, again, as you see here, in terms of burner distribution, which we talked about, we're working with an um, increasing energy uh, throughout the beginning of the roast. Some people are referring to this as soaking. Um, I mean, soaking, non-soaking, call it whatever you want. I'm not really uh, interested in that kind of terminology. Um, and, um, pushing a stable energy transfer throughout the, the, the majority of the millard and then pushing it down uh, right before crack and, and making a slight increase afterwards. Uh, whereas here we have a stable uh, push all the way through, right? Um, and we find that this style of profile is, is usually increasing the intensity of, of, of this specific coffee, uh, whereas 
this profile had so much intensity from the beginning as it were, so we didn't need to focus on increasing the intensity. So when we're cupping a green coffee for the first time, we're looking at, okay, what are the attributes in this coffee? How, how is the taste balance? What are the flavors that we have? And then if we find that one attribute is naturally very high, we're not gonna focus on that attribute when we're roasting. We're gonna focus on highlighting all of those other attributes, right? And as that's coffee changing, uh, we're gonna look objectively at that as well and do those kind of changes, right? So the coffee is inherently very sweet. Um, you don't have to focus that much on sweetness. Again, depending on what your goal is. At April, we're always looking for taste balance. That means sweetness and acidity, right? We like vibrant, really light, fresh coffees, but we want them to be balanced, right? So that's one of the key things here. So if a coffee is more acidic, then we're looking at how can we highlight the sweetness more than the acidity to create that kind of balance, right? Which is what we've been doing here as well. Um, so that was just a short kind of introduction, looking at, so what have we done here with the profile, you know, dating almost six months back versus what are we doing with it now? Um, and how can that change? A few tips and tricks in terms of, okay, so I have a coffee that is displaying a bit of age, what can I do with it? Um, again, some people are just basically over roasting it, which is, to be fair, effectively taking away most of the negative taste notes, but also the good taste notes. Uh, but looking at, is there anything I can do to actually keep the flavor quality, um, but um, actually make this coffee uh, taste less negative, right? Which I think is really important. Uh, we're gonna walk you through more of these coffees as well as we go. Uh, we do have fresh green coffee coming in as well, and that's a good opportunity to just showcase what do we do with that fresh green coffee. Um, in the meanwhile, thank you guys for watching as always. If you have any comments, write it down here as always. We're really happy when you guys share as well. Thank you for watching.